The following is a fan-made podcast production. The rolled players do not own or have any official involvement in the development and distribution of the Star Trek franchise. Star Trek Adventures is developed by Modiphius Entertainment, and the stories we tell are not to be taken as official Star Trek canon. <laughs> I just the anticipation. Let's we begin. Did some, okay, okay, all right, we did all some right. real great Star Trek in, and then now we're doing some more. And I'm like, oh my god! You do realize There's that so much to the, se- to. The, the 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 sound effect through that is the beginning of the episode. So yeah, of course it is. There we go. Congratulations, Jingwei. You're 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 making you're making drama. Oh god, it's great. So per the previously, um, we are now headed down to the planet of Abassa 7 to go hang out and have, was it dinner or lunch or brunch or tea, dessert maybe, with um, Lishka, the Romulan who called off the, the little, little attack squad uh, and runs the refinery. So we'll pick up in the, uh, the, the, the transporter room where uh, transporter chief... Uh, Brix Lerman uh, is preparing to transport you down. And we have all been assigned to this away team. Yes. Is anyone else coming with us? No. Okay. Just us for Dream oh. Team. Just the Just high us. command of the ship. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's it's in, the first. In it's the first Star Trek form. In two, in two Star Trek form. One bad thing <laughs> wipes out the chain of command. All right. <laughs> Listen, we're like a heist team. We're Spock's four. Oh, yeah. no. shut up! Um, <laughs> <laughs> I choose to believe that was both in and out of character. Yes, <laughs> simultaneously. Team, team, we need to focus. We've got a sneaky Romulan who's trying to do us a dirty. So let's uh, let's focus up and uh, make sure none of us die. I said that in character. That's that's in game. <laughs> that's my pup shot for everybody. Maybe not. The, Sorry, the, blo- the blood wine is getting to you, I think. <laughs> Lasagna's. Yeah, no, Sakosh is a little inebriated. But yeah, so you 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 make your way into the transporter room. The transporter chief, um, whose name is not Brick Slurman, that's dumb. Um, who we shall call Chief is waiting for you with uh, your respective weapons. Uh, Magor, you said you have a, uh, and are still armed with, apparently, a Klingon Disruptor. Yeah, correct? I have a Klingon Disruptor uh, on my on my hip, and um, you can see my Datag uh, dagger like on the other side of the belt. Awesome. And so, so you just I'm kinda, good to go. He, he, he looks at you as you, you come in and just says, they let you keep that? I am head of security. Aye, sir. And he <laughs> he uh, turns away with something of a mix of shock and, like, well, okay then, on his face. Um, as he turns to you, to Orly, Sakosha, Tavel, and... No, that's, 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 that's it. it. That's it. That's <laughs> it. I thought there was a fifth. No, we're good. Okay. It's just the four. Uh, turns to you guys and, and distributes to each of you a phaser type two. As he's doing so, I ask, mm, I don't predict this being an issue, but just in case, would you happen to have a field med kit available? Just in case. Aye, sir. Standard procedure. And he uh, 
reaches behind the the uh, the transporter console and uh, produces just such a thing, a, a, a sort of a small case of uh, medicinal supplies and and such. And he hands that to you. Thank you very much. Transporter is uh, standing by when you are when you're ready. Um, I take a look over to everybody. I look for people to nod. Uh, and I say to uh, Chief, beam us down. And as you head on up to your respective places, he steps behind the console, and you experience a slight tingling sensation as reality sort of fades into a, a, a white light and that's where the uh, podcast ends. Thank you. It's been a wonderful adventure. <laughs> um, <laughs> your atoms are scattered across space and time. Uh, and then they come back together on the planet's surface, um, which sort of, re- sort of reverse fades into view. Uh, and you find yourselves standing on uh, something of a landing platform. It's not quite big enough to accommodate a, 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 a large ship, a, a personal shuttle. It's a, it's a dock of sorts. Um, and there you are met by Grill, the Orion, who was in the uh, sort of the, the lead fighter just a few short minutes ago. And he looks around and he regards you and he says, I don't know what you said, but the boss wants to see you follow me and he leads you down um uh, you know a staircase out across it is sort of a um it is what it is it's it's a a long bridge across the uh across the water to the main complex um and as you head on in you note that it's um it overlooks the ocean it's got a nice view of uh, said ocean and you can see um, as the the sensors aboard ship had indicated if you look over the edge of the platform you can see several smaller uh, crystalline formations rising out of the water Uh, and they meet you there Um, and you head down to the 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 platform there around you are a great deal of a great many uh, converted storage containers, uh, temporary structures, um, and a, a small open air market uh, for the the, sta- the staff on site. It's got some small taverns, a bit of gambling, other services that appear to cater to the workers' uh, vices, and it's just on this side of of, of legal, from what you can see. Um, a couple different species, at least a dozen different species uh, from around this quadrant make up about 1,500 workers, by your estimate, if you had to guess, although there are notably no other Romulans that you can see. Do the workers look free, or are they collared or um, <clears throat> slave-like uh, they appear to be free. They, there aren't any any uh, collars or uh, slave equipment, anything like that. How are they visibly reacting to our presence? A mixture of confusion and indifference. Um, the indifferent ones give off a vibe of, oh, wondered when Starfleet would show up. And the confused, uh, confused masses seem to wonder what business you have. After all, this is just a, deuteri- uh, a deuterium refinery. No, it's just it's, it's fine. Are these Federation races? Uh, some Federation, others no. Hmm. Oh, this is quite the outfit, now, isn't it? Uh, to whom are you speaking, Tavel? Just sort of generally. To the group. Yes, uh, Lishka's made a point to uh, 
keep it inclusive and and lucrative, and really, that's all anybody can ask for, I suppose. I'm not well, sure I was expecting to see such an extensive operation. Neither were uh, many of the folks here, but they go where uh, they go where the work is. How long has Lishka been operating this particular refinery? Longer than I've been here. I worked for her starting, oh, I want to say three years ago, maybe four. Depends on the season. She's been in business for a little while longer than that, I should think. No more than, no more than a decade. So Lishka is the one who is in business rather than operating on someone else's behalf? That's above my pay grade, ma'am. Uh, she just uh, tells me what to do, and, and I do it. Hmm. Out of curiosity, what is your job description? Moral support. <laughs> I think Torley actually chuckles out loud at that. And so does Grell, just kind of a... <laughs> No. Head of security and moral support. Do you like your job? Good hours? Good benefits? It's better than anything the syndicate has to offer. Well, that's not exactly a high bar now, is it? Uh, the low bars are the ones you can jump over. Fair enough. Any other questions, comments, concerns while we're in such a chatty mood. Please continue. Well, all right. And he turns and he continues to lead you through this uh, this market here. Actually, I do have one last question. Now that I'm thinking about it. Sure. Uh, so this is a this is a, a market. So they're actively. Is it? Does it seem to be like a, a barter economy, or are they actually trading with currency? That we were past currency in this. Yeah, century. well, that's that's sort of why I'm wondering. Uh, is, or a federation, is, right? Yeah, not exactly. Yeah. Well, with that being said, so if we're past currency of the federation, but other worlds use currency, how do we procure such currency? So we the federation, have... the federation does have currency. It's called credits. Um, when we say post currency, uh, it just means that. Your average citizen doesn't really have to worry about it. Need for it. Yeah, um, you know, you, you see, you see many occasions uh, in in the shows and such. Uh, the, the one that comes to mind right now is you know the very first episode of TNG where mm-hmm. uh, Doctor Crusher just buys a whole bolt of fabric, and you think, okay, well, how does she afford that? I don't think they're using. She's got money. It's just that. You know, um, basic basic needs are met in the Federation: housing, food, that sort of thing. It's no one really like you. You you can be wealthy in the Federation, but nobody is poor. There's there's like there's a lot yeah. of like philosophical debate. Yeah, uh, amongst people who have more time than me. <laughs> yeah. um, but <laughs> uh, it also kind of seems like I don't know, sorry, where you came across. It also kinda seems like that. Federation citizens don't really use credit within the Federation. They don't yeah. really have to, but like yeah. in terms of a currency outside of the Federation. Yeah, kind of right. Something. something that has an exchange rate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like DS9 is an essay in why somehow the Federation has to have some form of exactly. currency exchange. Yeah. It's with other people, not within the Federation. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um,. And then I just got distracted. Uh, Torley, you had you had asked, "Are they using currency? Are they using currency? They they they, they, I, they are. If, if you using... want it for the audio sake, I can't ask that in character, but uh, sure, let's do that." Um, mm, Mister mm, Grell, was it? Yep. I'm curious about this market, this planet. As far as I understand, by our charts, is in Federation space. Yet there does seem to be a sort of economic exchange here that doesn't exactly belie an exactly standard federation way of operating. Hmm. 
Do you have your own economy here? Whose money are you using, if you're using any? We have a system in place. Um, we do business with people around. Uh, Orions, like myself. Other species, uh, Euridians, a couple of Ferengi. They're a handful. You meet people, you work out agreements. A lot of it's barter systems, but uh, every so often, actual money does change hands. And that's, uh, that's Lishka's department. Interesting. So she's not just managing this facility, she's also... Oh, what's the word? Bank sphere... Bank rolling it. Fund From what managing. I understand. F- exactly. Fund, fund managing. From what I understand, she has... Uh, well, she came into some money a while ago, and... Uh, it's about all I know. Is he... Is there a way to tell if he's withholding purposely? Yeah, go ahead and... Um, I'm going to pull up the actual sheet here because I still don't know all the fucking stats and things. One second here. Character sheets, here we go. Yep, so if you want to uh, see if he's he's withholding something, go ahead and give me... Let's call it. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and just give me a um, command plus insight. Okay, thirteen. Okay, I'm rolling two. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, a fourteen and a ten. All right, so one success. One success. Uh, he's not holding anything back, from what you can tell. And. Uh, the conversation pr- proceeds as such uh, as you get to um... Is there anything that would be particularly intriguing that's being traded here? Like anything that would catch our eye is like that's an uncommon root vegetable. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> that is not legal or just whatever it is that's like strange or odd or eye catching to Starfleet members. Um, or is it all just pretty much ordinary produce and feels pretty ordinary. Um, maybe, maybe some, some livestock trading that doesn't quite look like it's just for food. Um, but other than that, um, if gold shiny things are your fancy, uh, there are some strips and, and bars of a gold pressed substance uh, being traded every so often. Hmm. Usually among the one or two uh, weird big eared aliens there. Hmm. Um, yeah, but you're led into the facility's office. And by that, I mean you are taken through a maze of hallways into uh, what appears to be a pretty lavish sort of dining room. It kind of betrays the... uh, um, or or contrasts with the the, the, the futuristic port town vibe uh, you got from outside. And there at the head of the table and in the, in, it seems she, she dressed up actually, uh, is Lishka, the Romulan, who stands and says, ah, took you long enough. Welcome. Thank you, Grill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please sit down, everybody. I uh, have an, a, a, an assortment of things here. I don't quite know what your uh, tastes are. I was expecting... Rather more humans. So were we. Ah, well then, we have something in common, don't we? <laughs> of course. Yes. Please, sit, sit. Uh, can I get you any uh, beverages, libations? I've got a lovely uh, 20-year-old Romulan ale. Uh, I would love to try some Romulan ale, if you would be so kind, Lishka. 
I can be very kind to my friends, and I do hope we're friends. I don't want this to turn into anything ugly. I know that my people and yours are not always seen eye to eye. So um, while I do that, please... Um, I would put forward that Romulan ale is technically illegal within the Federation, and according to our star charts, we are technically within Federation space, but I think I could also forget that for a complimentary glass. I like your attitude, Mr. Cation. Torley is fine. Torley. Lovely. And uh, your name, my dear, I didn't, didn't quite get it. I assume you're referring to me. I was referring to Slykosha, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I, I can't uh, tell yes. which way you're pointing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, I thought you should introduce yourself. I also forgot that Romulan L was illegal. That's fine. Uh, um, I, I thought it was an in character choice of yeah. Sakosha going, that's alcohol. It was. <laughs> it was an in character choice. Um, it's, why don't we go around and introduce ourselves? Uh, you know my name, obviously. I know this charming Mr. Tooli here, but the uh, rest of you, who's, who's, who's who and what's what? And she pops over to a cabinet, listening, you can tell. Uh, as she, she gives you her attention. Uh, well, uh, my name is Sakosha. I am the first officer uh, aboard the Upraxia. Well. Yes. Rank uh, hath its privileges, no? <laughs> it is merely, merely a title. Uh, but it, it, let me, you know, give the floor to the other crew members here, if you'd like, uh, to build. I'm Tavel. That's Tavel. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Tavel. <laughs> Just kind of a curt little wave. Hello. And, uh, ooh. It was this big, strong, handsome bruiser. Commander Magor. Is that a name or is that a he may go you? Warning. Is that a joke? Or Yes, it's a joke. I... Forget the Klingons don't have a sense of humor. Forgive me. Judging by your joke, now that you Romulans. Ah! And perhaps we're both mistaken. That's good. I like him. I like him a lot. Yes, and she pours your ale and then pours some for herself. A, a water for me. Thank you very much. Ever the Vulcan. And she swaps out your ale for a, a glass of water. Is there a possible moment when she's turned away, that I could subtly sneak my tricorder out and start scanning for, um, oh God, what's the particle? Tetrion. Uh, Tetrion. Tetrion. Tetrion particles. You could. Uh, do I, what's the Star Trek Adventures equivalent of a stealth check? Do I have to roll one? Um, ooh, that's a good question. What would a stealth check be? <laughs> I'm sure I can do the science check. Either, um, but... I'm going to call that a, um, we'll call that science. I'm going to call that science. Okay. And. Tell me it's daring. No. I'm going to say daring. No, I, daring? I feel like, yes. I feel like pres presence is more of a command sort of thing. I'm going to say you're risking something here. Yeah. Sci science and daring. It's Fantastic. Science and daring. That's a 15. Is a, your target number? Is it, is my target number? Yes. Torley okay. is very daring and has very little self-control. <laughs> All right, uh, so that's 2d20? 2d20. All righty. That is a five and dis... Oh, sorry, that's that's a d12, not a d20. Uh, one of those is a six. Okay. And the other one is a 12. All right, so that's a double success on, on that. And then do I need to roll the actual scanning thing as well to see how well I do? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Let me, let me check to see if... Uh... Like Stealthing out the tricorder feels like something I would have to actually work to do, but scanning itself feels like something I'm capable yes, so, of doing easily. So for 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 that for the scanning, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, uh, science and, and control. Science and control. Well, control is my worst skill, but or sorry, worst attribute. Where did I do twenty go? Um, do I have a focus or anything I can add in here? Uh, not really. Okay. 
so, uh, sorry, so my control is seven, my science is five, and that adds up to 12. Okay. That's a one and a 19. Okay. I think so, we've just earned some momentum here. So the 19, yeah. well, the 19's a failure. Oh. The yeah, 19's but the a one failure. is like a critical The success, one is a critical, right? which means it's two successes, so it evens out. It evens oh, out. Okay. okay, he needed two. Yep. Okay. I'm yep. fine with that. Yep. But we have uh, built momentum, right? Uh, no, each scene, okay. remember, it, it disperses, so we don't have any momentum right now. And I've, and I've, and I've, and I've hit the success threshold. You've hit the success these. threshold. Yeah, okay. there's no momentum so, so, right yeah. now. So, so nothing about that. Okay. Okay. Um, fine with that. Fine with hitting the success threshold for both. Yeah. So you are able to determine traces. Okay. Of Tetrion particles. It it definitely did originate from this planet. Not necessarily here. This this facility. Okay. But definitely from this planet. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. And so as um as Lishka sits down, she uh kind of regards you with a a welcoming host like smile and says, Well, tuck in. I assume we have lots to talk about. Yeah, yes. I presume rather that you have lots to tell about. Do I? Starting with, what are you doing here? Mining deuterium. I thought that was obvious. You have quite an impressive. Operation here, Lishka. Uh, how long have you been mining deuterium here? Oh, well, here it's been... Oh, me, oh, my. Six. No, five, five or six, five or six years now. You have clearance by the Federation to do this? Well... <clears throat> I didn't exactly say say that. Um, I figured it was close enough to the neutral zone that no one would really uh, come looking. You've proved me wrong. It's not easy to do. You know, that is not how borders work, especially when it comes to neutral zones. Have you forgotten who my people are? She says with a, with a amused grin. No. As, uh, I have not. Uh, we mm-hmm. certainly have not. And while the Federation has a tendency to have a open mind, <laughs> it has a tendency to close when it comes to Romulans. But in the spirit of staying neutral for this occasion, uh, perhaps we might learn a bit more, Lishka. You had mentioned this is not your first operation. You seem to be a very adept businesswoman. Thank you. Uh, we'd love to learn more of your experience. Oh, well, first and foremost, let me uh, clarify that I do not represent the Empire. You may put your minds at ease about that. I uh, rather detest the way the Romulan Star Empire does things, and that's why I struck out on my own you know business is a bit more uh well when it's done right business is a bit more direct and i don't enjoy backstabbing and, and secrets beyond the standard company fare you understand of course so of course. Uh, business. Uh, mm, am i in, to interpret then that there is a certain amount of backstabbing and secret anything that goes along with your business that it's just not quite the standard Romulan amount but perhaps still more than the Federation would be used to to that Lishka um, pauses for a moment uh, and uh, you know she's smiling at your at your your wit uh And takes a sip of her ale. And when she puts it down, she says, It's true, my methods are not 
entirely as um, clear cut and and white bread, perhaps, to use the uh, the old human expression, as the Federation might like. But you may rest assured that any stabbing is done facing my uh, business competitors and is entirely metaphorical, I promise you. Who are your competitors? Oh, the Orions, the Ferengi, a couple of Eurydians. Every so often we'll get a band of Nausicans. They're a fun bunch. Yeah, many of them seem to be working for you here. Well, many of them, like myself, share reservations about the ways their respective peoples handle business. For example, you met Grell, did you not? And Grell, also seated, kind of waves. He's, he's, he's busy eating uh, what appears to be a, a haunch of some, some beast. Um, Lishka returns her attention to you and says, don't know if you're aware of this, you probably are. But Orion females have pheromones that make it nigh impossible for their male counterparts to deny them anything. It's sort of how the syndicate came to be, you understand. The uh, Orion slave girls are very much the masters in that sort of situation. And, uh, well, Grell here wanted to make his own decisions. That's why it comes to work for me. But make him do anything that I wouldn't do myself. Do you not wish to do business with the Federation? Or do you disagree with the way the Federation does business? Not entirely. But I think the Federation might, uh, well, as Miss Tavell pointed out, close its mind to a Romulan engaging in such business as this within its borders. So the option is to break the law? It's better to ask forgiveness than permission, I believe. If they wouldn't give you permission, what makes you think they would give you forgiveness? I can be very persuasive. Uh, Torley just, like, reaches a hand to slide a high five under the table to make her. <laughs> <laughs> to, and to I'm just use... like... Not now. <laughs> just like, don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> and to try to diffuse some of, I guess, the tension, Sakosha will um, chime in with a, well, to use a, another human expression, it, it seems that this isn't your first rodeo, as they say. I'm sorry, what's a rodeo? That was my question, too, actually. Ah, uh, yeah, I should have explained myself a bit more. I, I just mean that it seems that you've been doing this for quite a while and you are very skilled at it and mm. must have a lot of experience uh, and connections and the like, is what I mean. Well, yes. Now that you mention it, I do. Have you gone under the radar thus far? Well, it seems you've... Uh caught me red-handed there and while I don't like being bested at my own game if it really does come down to it I suppose I am willing to start the registration process do this what's the phrase by the book if you insist upon it well that would be a start I love starts they can lead to so many wonderful things uh what's what's the, sorry what's the type of particle that Bumped into us that brought us here? Tetrion. Tetrion. Okay. Um, to Orly will actually just blurt out, uh, what do you know about Tetrions? What? I'm sorry? Tetrions? What do I know about Tetrions? My dear man, I'm not a scientist. I'm afraid I, I couldn't tell you. Does it seem like she's lying? I don't know. What, what's, the, what's the check I have to roll again? Uh, what did I say last time? I think we said insight and command. Ins insight yeah. and command, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Well, insight's 11. Command is 1, so that's a 12. 
Okay. That's a seven and a 19. Mm. You're not able to tell one way or the other. Could I perhaps give it a go? Sure. Okay. Is this a is this a moment where like out of game I should explain my reasoning or would that feel like meta gaming? You can if you want. I'm just I I am if she's been flying under the radar this long, it yeah. would not make sense to me for her to beam an artificial uh wave of tetrions in the direction of a ship right. with a transmission in it that would end in her being caught. Right. So either yeah. she sent it and someone's like holding her hostage and she needs help, or there's someone or something else here that tried to find a way to contact people that she wouldn't know about, mm -hmm. which I will at some point explain in character, but this does not seem like the opportune moment. And yeah. in game, I will say then she does also seem like a very sneaky person. So That's do you still too. want me to, to try if, and if you want to, yeah. Yeah, why not? What All do right. I roll again? Salute, by the way. No. Um, insight and command. Insight and command. My insight is 10. My command is 4, so that's 14. And then 2d20. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an 11 and a 14. Your years of experience have given you a, a unique insight here, and you can tell that there is more to this than she's letting on to use the metaphor uh her poker face isn't quite up to snuff not not for you anyway mm. i don't know what to do with that information well you can do it you can do a couple things you can you can you can try to you know maybe maybe intimidate her you can use presence and presence and command um pull rank you're in federation space you you, you caught her Okay. You can continue uh, to be diplomatic. You can threaten her, Megor. You know, <laughs> you, have, you have options. We can play it any way you want. Oh God, oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, Ian. Are you feeling like you want to threaten someone? I. Uh, or do you what? What do you want to do, Emily? I I have been wanting to look at her and just go. Do it. What would be one good reason that we should let your outfit remain here? As I understand it. Your warp cores and your, your fuel in the cells require deuterium. I could be a very, very... Are you currently supplying the Federation? No, but I could. So the loss of your outfit would not be of any loss to the Federation as it currently stands, is what you're saying? Not a loss, but you have all the more to gain. I need a little bit more than that, Blishka. Isn't it logical to want to gain without taking any losses? The universe is full of possible gain, but possibilities are not what this Starfleet runs on. It is realities. On the contrary, Madam Vulcan, my understanding of your Starfleet is that you seek possibility everywhere, no? Infinite diversity and infinite combinations, that is our Vulcan brother's way, hmm? Strange new worlds, strange new civilizations, always looking to expand, to learn, to dig your claws into... My point being, the possibility is there, and it would be illogical, she says with a flash of malice in her eye, not to explore it. After all, that's what Starfleet does, right? It explores things. Lishka. I can't speak to possibilities, merely politics. <clears throat> you are in Federation space. Your facility mines a very useful, necessary element mm. for warp. You're very close to the border of three, <clears throat> at best, Cold War nations. That's true. One of them has just suffered a loss in some of his energy supply. Yes, I heard my sympathies. Hmm. The fact is the Federation doesn't have to tolerate your existence here. They can simply come in. Starfleet takes over this mining operation. 
and you're out of business. My government also hearing of your presence would be uh, quite alarmed that a Romulan led and Orion manned deuterium operation is so close to their border and they might put a stop to you. So to go with my compatriot here, what do you offer? And she appears to think about this for a moment. If you're running out of ideas, I can offer you a suggestion. And she smiles again, but but you can tell it's not a friendly one. It, it, it you've you've got her cornered. And she says, "And what might that be?" Our vessel, the Upraxia, has suffered some damage from a Tetrion beam that originated at this planet. There is no denying or reconsidering, or any chance that we have made a mistake about that. I am not inclined to think that it is your operation which originated this beam. So take some comfort in that. But your aid in locating the source might be good enough for us to leave this out out of certain logs. Also, on my part, another glass of Romulan ale. This one disappeared surprisingly quickly. It does do that. But all trace of friendliness is, is gone. As she says that, you know, I shall make you a deal. Isn't that what Romulans do best? It so happens, yes. A few of my workers have disappeared recently. They're not gone off-world, I would know. And we've searched the refinery from top to bottom. Two of them disappeared out in the uh, that lovely ocean out there in a submersible. If... You will employ your ship's capabilities to help me find them. Then perhaps I might be inclined to take a look and see what uh, I can do about this Tetrion problem of yours. Hmm? What assurances do we have that you would hold up your end of the bargain? Unlike certain members of my esteemed former government, I am not a spy. I am a businesswoman. I honor my deals even when I don't like them. I think that it's within our capability to make a show of good faith by searching for your people. I think as far as I am concerned, Commander, I'm satisfied with this, but it is your decision. Thank you. Why did your people go into the ocean in a submersible? They were investigating possible concentrations of deuterium on the ocean floor. Starfleet's not the only one that explores looking for possibilities. Why would you need to go looking for deuterium on the ocean floor if your mind's not on the ocean floor or perfectly full of deuterium? Resources are finite, and I would rather not have to suffer the indecency of uh, being caught without, should a vein dry up or such disaster as that. Deliveries to make, bills to pay... Mining is dangerous work. I have other questions about who you are possibly receiving bills from. Is this in the Federation? Well, I don't think they... We, we, we would technically bill you. Mm, That's a philosophical question. Never mind. I'm going to keep drinking. And she pours you another glass. You said you sell to the Ferengi, Eridians, Orions. They work as intermediaries between others. Well, yes. Do you know who they sell to? Or you don't know? Nope. I don't ask questions. Not those questions, anyway. Lishka, are you aware of any, any other life on this planet other than the people mining for the deuterium? Are there any other life forms, creatures that one might encounter in the ocean? A variety of sea creatures, yes. It's a veritable ecosystem down there and a very tasty one at that. Mm. Are we eating those sea creatures right now? Well, yes. Fabulous. I can't wait to get a sample myself. Wait a few hours. Well? Mm, Gross. (laughs) And she, um, she chuckles. Well, Lishka, 
after much consideration and deliberation, uh, I think one more glass of Romulan ale is in order. <clears throat> as we... That was in character, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I look over it. As you're saying for more, as you're already like, I mean, charitably, we should call it buzzed. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm, at two, I'm at two for uh, the day. This is like five for... After having, after downing a mug of blood wine. Ex- with yeah. <laughs> so, I forgot. No. Uh, you, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Megor, I wasn't clear on this. Do you have Romulan ale? I have it. I haven't touched it. Okay. Um, then... Um, Tavel will lean over a bit and say only slightly quieter than what she's already said. At least two of us are on duty. Mm. I, as I nod. And... <clears throat> We're all on duty, Tavel. Some of us <laughs> yeah. just interpret that yeah. slightly differently. <laughs> Torley and Sakosha <laughs> are the carrot and Mabel <laughs> and Tavel are the stick. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to ingratiate myself to this Romulan. Did you just say ingratiate? <laughs> ingratiate. <laughs> okay, maybe I've had a little too much Romulan ale. <laughs> so, <laughs> what so, you like to call a balanced party? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Rand. So, so Megor clears the throat loudly, and I make like pointed eye contact with um, Commander Sakosha. Perhaps a glass of water instead, but the sentiment is there nonetheless. Shall we drink to this agreement? And as she, Lishka, you can tell, looks sort of from Megor to you with sort of an amused twinkle in her eye. Mm, I'll have that glass if you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Strange are the days. When a federation will do business with a Romulan and a Klingon gives the orders. Water then? Yes. And she. Galling. (laughs) (laughs) Galling. This is fantastic. This is Uh... the exact fucking rapport I was hoping for. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then she she hands you a glass of water, Sakosha, and you to Orly another glass of ale. Uh, and she says, and in the spirit of this good faith, might I offer you accommodations? You seem to have had a bit to, uh, bit to drink, dear me. Uh, well, uh, uh, I shoot oh. my eyes over to Magor, both as a, I can't believe you put me in the situation, but also as security, you can make the call. We would be grateful, but uh, what of your it's employees, we call them? If they might be in danger, perhaps we should begin our search. Silly of me to be so thoughtless. You're quite right, of course. I shall let you get to your business, and I shall return to mine. Do you have anything that could help us to identify the life signs of your missing people? Hmm. She's, a, she's a smiley one, but this one's just a very, just a touch of... I don't want to call it malice, but a little mischief to it. As she she grins and says, well, they're human. You don't have any sort of tracking technology, an implant or a mm, frequency or a a signal from their submersible that we could track? If I had, Mr. Torley, do you think I'd be asking the Federation for help? Maybe. I don't actually know you all that well, ma'am. Fair enough. But I don't. At the very Alas. least, Lishka, do you have descriptions, names, and Henry. numbers on the general population of humans in your outfit? I do. And I will transfer this information to your ship. Agreeable. I thought as much. To Orly says a very loud cheers and then knocks back the last glass of Romulan ale. Oh. Yeah, Tavel will like drain the water glass. Uh Magor will will toast the uh the glass, but he'll um he won't actually drink. 
sort of diplomatically slowly puts it back on the table mm. and says, uh, well, uh, it seems we have our, uh, our mission and we, uh, can report when uh, that is done. I do the same uh, with my glass. I I go, I raise it up, but I don't drink from it. Well, Lishka, thank you again for your hospitality. It was a pleasure hosting you, Commander. We will retire to our ship and begin the search. Very good. Mr. Grell? Yes? That's your cue, Mr. <laughs> Grell. Oh. Uh, yes, fo- you'll follow me back to the uh, the landing pad. If every is everyone just gonna head out and follow Grell? Yeah, I will. Um, yeah. I just want to like Magor gets up and goes to leave, but uh, he turns and says, oh, "Oh, pardon, but one more thing, Lystra. Yes, I was curious. Uh, did you have any dealings with um, Klingons?" Klingons. No. Or if I did, they used a, they used an intermediary, like you said. She's definitely fucking lying. Um, Why do you ask? Well, these are uh, interesting times for the Empire. Energy is uh, in short supply right now. But also, there aren't... Uh, not everyone has the Empire's interest at heart. Ah. Can I see if she was lying? Yeah. Um, Command and insight. Okay, so 13. Uh, I rolled a 14 and a 1. No, she's not lying. I thought she was. Or at least she doesn't believe she's lying. Okay. I won't uh, keep you any longer. Thank you for the drink. Be honest. Was it not bloody enough? And she says that with a genuine joking sort of feel. Would have helped for next time. <laughs> so noted, Mr. Megor. So noted. And you... Head back to the landing platform where you where you first arrived. As soon as we step out of the room that we were in with Lishka, Torley just spits out the whole last glass of Romulan ale that he was just holding in his mouth the entire time. And he's just that shit is disgusting. Oh, I hope you all appreciate that incredible diplomatic show I just put on. I could not swallow another glass of that. <laughs> Thank you for your sacrifice. Grell's Grell's laughing at that too. He just says, "It's dis- it's vile, isn't it?" It's, uh, it makes my fur stand on end. <laughs> you may not even notice, but the, the corners of Tavel's mouth will twitch. <laughs> <laughs> also, I did. Also, see your reaction, Mr. Magor, and I understand it would technically be improper for a Starfleet officer to be completely inebriated on a mission. So, well, I'm not concerned so much with proper as with why would you put yourself in a weakened position against an unknown foe? That's a philosophical argument <laughs> we can have later. Uh, Man's uh, got a uh, point. Uh, <laughs> Sikosha just walks along as this conversation <laughs> is happening, stewing in her own head, um, not wanting to admit the reality of the situation that just happened, uh, recognizing that Megor was probably right, but not wanting to give him the satisfaction of agreeing. Uh, but she will say in her own way, very briefly, I think I prefer blood wine to the Romulan ale. And just walks along quiet. Uh, Magor has a nice big smile <laughs> on his face. Just... <laughs> so just sees his smile, actively frowns, and keeps away. So Orly just leans over to Tavel and goes, I'm not the best with non occasion facial expressions and behavior. Are they flirting? God. <laughs> God. Are you asking me, Mr. Orly? You know, fair enough, Commander. And then Torley just <laughs> sort of stands aside from everyone else, continuing to walk along. Well, 
I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> and you uh, at last make a very your way. silent and awkward walk has had the rest of the way to the transport pad. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah, you head to the. Uh, head to the 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 um the, trans- the transportation coordinates and uh whenever you're ready um commander yar and if, if, if you'd like to do the honors commander sakosha to transporter room are you ready to bring us back transporter room here standing by excellent beam us up Hey everyone, this is Sawyer Payne, your Game Master, your Fleet Admiral, your insert witty descriptor here. Um, Not a whole lot to say this week, uh, but as always, thank you for tuning in. Uh, We were dealing with some strange audio issues uh, with this episode, hence the delay in release, so I appreciate your patience there. The adventure is uh, definitely very verbose. Uh, this episode but it is picking up so now's a great time to get caught up give us a follow on twitter uh on on patreon and yeah happy february and uh i'll let us get back to the episode the world fades back into view around you and that strange tingling sensation of the transporter uh, is amplified somewhat, depending on how much you've had to drink. Oh, no. And, uh... Oh, God. I won't say that it's bad, but you notice it a lot more. Uh, as you rematerialize on the transported pad, there stands the Chief. There stands Captain Spock. Report. Captain. Well, it seems that... The Romulan Lishka is, well, running a mining operation. Very clearly not okayed by the Federation. And we have managed to cut a deal with her in exchange for information on where these Tetrion, where the Tetrion beam has come from. We are to locate two three was it of two, two. thank you Charlie. Uh, two of her employees who have gone missing in a submergible I, a submarine a submarine essentially in the ocean she was uh, sly charming all the above uh, so that is the deal we've cut and Hopefully we'll pursue this. She wanted us to stay. Magor deemed that uh, not a good idea, so I... I commend your decision, Commander Magor. Commander Yarin, are you... well? (sighs) The transporter just uh, got to me a little bit. Perhaps I might go and... uh, take a moment in my quarters. Yes. I'm told that water might help, he says with a raised eyebrow. Yes, Captain. I'm fine, not that anyone asked. (laughs) Good. Then you'll have no problem manning the sensor station. No, not at all, Captain. To your positions, then. You as well, Engineer. Indeed. And, Commander Torley, I will follow you to sensor stations, because I presume we are going to begin right away? Hmm? Yes, absolutely, of course. Yes, I... Yes, let's go. And as you two make for the bridge, and, uh, Sakosha, you head to your quarters... Spock turns to you, Megor, and says, Would you join me in my ready room, Commander? Yes, Captain. And he leads you to a uh, a small office. Not quite his ready room on the bridge, but it's 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 a little office space um, on this deck. And he offers you a seat. 
I sit. <clears throat> he sits. He sits across from you. Commander Magor, in your estimation, does this Lishka pose a threat? We haven't encountered any serious threat to the ship or the crew um, as of yet. She knows much more than she's letting on. Mm. And she's breaking the law. Surely the Federation would not want that to stand, particularly since she is in control of such a valuable material. But we are in no immediate danger. If we are, she played that very close to her chest. I see. And in your estimation, how did the crew manage themselves? Commander, I don't think that's my... uh, Excuse me, Captain, I don't think that's my place to... As head of security... It is your place to determine whether my crew pose a threat to the ship or themselves in such states as they may return. And it is Commander Yaren's role as the officer in command to make the report of the mission to you, not me. Very well. If you wish to ask me, uh, uh, General, how... In general, how uh, the the state of our crew, I have not had uh, sufficient time to examine them yet. Then perhaps now is ample time to do so, Commander. Thank you. Dismissed. Thank you, Captain. And uh, actually, that's actually kind of what I was going to do. I was going to um, meet with uh, my security staff. Okay. Um, if possible. Um Probably whoever the um, shift commanders are, um, shift you know shift leaders. I assume I have a handful of lieutenants and then ensigns. Yeah, we'll okay. start with the lieutenants, um, whom I have not yet bothered to name. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to do that now. That's okay. <laughs> that that's my next. That's like that's my next um, point of order. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if you want to head to, you know, security I offices, Spock, or... fuck, I just fucking gave Spock attitude. Like, <laughs> fuck, am I? It was incredible. I uh, I really enjoyed that. I was just like, oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> get off my We're... dick, buddy. <laughs> Spock asked you to narc, and you said no. It was incredible. <laughs> I have so many thoughts. This is oh. I just. <laughs> I've never felt so much shame. <laughs> like, I know Seriously, this is a game, no. and I'm making these choices as a character, like, for it to be interesting and fun, and obviously myself would never make these choices. <laughs> but I'm feeling so much shame. It, <laughs> I, there's no in, I, there's no in between, and I don't know how to deal with those feelings I'm right waiting now. for the first time I'm all terrified. four of us are, like, off-duty in the officer's lounge, and it's just like, hey, so what the fuck is going on with all of us? <laughs> no, so, like, what is happening right now is that Mike Sakosha has gone back into her quarters and she's it's like a it's just like a spiral yeah, like let's, that. let's let's do that let's you play want that. me oh yeah oh <laughs> yeah, god we're going to it. a place dark <laughs> okay sure uh y'all let you lead the way all right so, so you so yeah oh. having having received not quite a not quite a reprimand from spock oh my god. um you you return to your quarters and yeah, how, how's that look? What do you What are your quarters like? What do you do once you get there? So she, the door, slides open, and mm-hmm. the lights are dim ish, and she doesn't bother to turn them on to full brightness. The door closes behind her. She walks in, and she just like sighs and takes in her room and thinks to herself. What the fuck am I doing? She goes and she sits down, like, on the ground at, like, the little coffee table that is in her room. She lights a candle and she stares at the flame that's flickering 
And in her head, she keeps beating herself up. She's like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know you've compromised yourself. Why are you doing this? You're sabotaging everything that you've worked hard for. And in the back of her head, there's just like, like a needle pointing at her. And um, she can hear the the sound of her friend, her past friend. Is it Colin? Colin, yep. <laughs> yeah, it was Colin. Some friend. I don't even know his name. <laughs> <Yeah>. She's yeah. <laughs> suppressed a lot of shit. Thank you very much. <laughs> and she just hears, like, his voice in the back of her head saying, like, Come on, kid. What the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing this to yourself? You're so much better than this. I believed in you. And Pick- it's as Colin's voice is playing in your head that your door chime rings. Oh, fuck. Yes? Commander Yarin, it's Spock. Sikosha, are you all right? Um, and she, like... Blows the candle out and um, composes herself. Uh, and she says, uh, Please come in, Captain. Yes, I'm, I'm all right. Thank you. And the door opens and Spock walks in. And again, you've known him for a while now. And his face is different, even though it is the ever, ever, ever the composed Vulcan. He's not here as your commanding officer. He's here as a friend. I wanted to inquire about your state of mind. At the present moment? Indeed. I've certainly been better. I understand that your transfer came at a difficult time. Yes, but I am here to do a job and to serve the crew and to serve you. And my behavior was unacceptable and will not happen again, sir. That is gratifying to hear. But in my experience, grief is not easily managed, is it? No. It is not. I will not reprimand you further on the matter, but I would suggest that if you do require assistance, you reach out to Dr. Thronor or myself. I know what it is like to lose a friend. Thank you, Captain. Would you like to relight these candles with me? And I've been practicing some forms of Vulcan meditation, which, as of late, I have been neglecting to do in exchange for other methods of comfort. Would it surprise you to learn that so have I? Come, let us meditate. And you light the candles. On the bridge... Commander, uh, excuse me, Commander, uh, Lieutenant Hackett has the con, so he's the commanding officer right now. Uh, and to Orly and to Vel, you guys are um, at the sensor station. How would you How would you like to do this? Um, I presume that we have received the information from Lushka? You have, yes. Um, you know what to look for. The question is how you would like to do it. Um, if you want to scan the entire planet, that will take about a day, uh, 24 hours. Alternatively, uh, you can organize a, a team of, of shuttlecraft, perhaps, um, to go out and, and cover a wider area, and, and, and you can coordinate that, which will reduce the time to 12 hours. Uh, I leave that decision to you. Is there any way to do both at the same time? Or would, that, would that be a waste of resources? Uh, that was going to be Tavel's comment, is that that seems like an undue monopolization of our systems. 
I'll let you. I'll let you hash that out. I won't tell you the right way to do it. Uh, Commander Orly, I have a sense that time may not be on our side in this. I think that doing this as quickly as possible, by sending out some shuttles, might be the best approach. Hmm. I think I agree. I might argue technically that time is on no one's side. It's a construct in and of itself. But in practice, you're correct. I Perhaps in more concrete terms, I am one, concerned about another Tetrion being. Mm. And two, I am concerned about Swishka having too much time to formulate plans. That is a fair point. I didn't think about her as an active variable. Hmm. My recommendation then would be to send out a few shuttle teams to act in concert with each other and do active sector by sector sensor sque- squeeps. A few active sector by sector sensor sweeps. I, I, Commander Tavell, I assure you that I am more than capable of holding my liquor, no matter its planet of origin. That, and then T- Torley lets out a very audible burp. <laughs> <laughs> um, you will, you will I am see again, Tavell is probably actively trying hard to hold it together right now. Like, <laughs> um, you, you probably haven't seen a Vulcan wanting to smile quite so much. <laughs> uh, but but being very good about not. But, you know, like, if, if you are watching it all, you'll you'll see she's fighting. <laughs> I apologize, Commander. That was mm, not exactly the decorum one expects from a Starfleet officer. A pity, that. Um, let's send out a few shuttle crews acting in concert, scanning the platter. The plat... Hmm. Hmm, scanning the planet. I can speak Federation Standard. I'm an adult. I'm fine. That being said, do we have any shuttles rated for not just zero atmosphere or one atmosphere exploration, for multiple atmospheres? It seems to me that it wouldn't be a bad idea to, while we have multiple shutters, shut. Hmm. <laughs> Hack, hack it from the chair just goes you tell him commander <laughs> oh hack it oh I can have your hide if I wanted <laughs> multiple shuttles flying in atmosphere scanning the planet it wouldn't be a bad idea to try and catch an early lead on this one and if we have shuttles capable of descending into high-pressure aquatic environments, perhaps sending a few down into areas that appear to our scanners to contain high levels of deuterium or perhaps any metallic content that speaks to a crashed or stationary artificial vehicle. Scans which I can have my science team try and do a, a, a quick preliminary scan of. Interesting suggestion, Mr. Toilet. I concur. And we do have however many uh, said shuttles in Bay. Uh, I would like to say that we have perhaps four shuttles that are so capable. You'd know better than I would. Do you have anyone in particular you were thinking of piloting those shuttles? I could be at least one of them. Fantastic. I'll pick out a few of my best scientists, but I think I'll join you in one shuttle, just for well the hell of it hell of it might be the most apt term, Mr. Torley, because Uh as you begin to put this plan into fruition you notice that there's a hell of a storm brewing on the planet below Oh no! and as time is of the essence you're probably going to have to fly right into it. The Rolled Players present Ex Astris, Star Trek Adventures, a real play Star Trek Adventures podcast starring the vocal talents of Courtney St. Gilles, Ian Helmick, Jingwei Patrick Sullivan, Emily Morcos, and Sawyer Payne. Special thanks to Jacqueline Hodgkins for our cover art. 
Symbol Bird and the Free Music Archive for our theme music, and to you, our listeners. For updates and ways to get involved, please consider following us on Twitter or Patreon, which you can find in this episode's info. Live long and prosper.